show, Facebook. Hi, I'm Rhonda Hamilton. I'm the Executive Director with Am I Mother's Keeper, and we're coming to you again with another segment of our Mental Intelligent TV Hi, segment series. I want you guys to understand that Am I Mother's Keeper is out here in this community, and although October was Domestic Violence Month officially, um, our beautiful guest in the studio today down here on the waterfront is none other than Miss Cheryl Spann. Um, and I'm going to let her tell you a little bit more about who she is and this powerful message that she's bringing to us today. But guys, I'm going to tell you something. If you know somebody that is wrestling with domestic violence, if you know someone who is very proud and very concerned about their ability to receive help and ma maintain their privacy, um, if there's someone struggling, if you yourself are struggling with how to help folks, Guys, today's show is the one that you're going to want to tune into. I'm going to give you a few minutes because Ms. Hamilton is not very savvy on all this technology and getting watch parties started, Cheryl. You know what I'm saying? But I am very savvy in knowing a message and knowing what's necessary for our community. Hello, Facebook. And my mother's keeper is on, and we're getting ready to talk about some very powerful stuff as it relates to domestic, sexual, and community violence. Know anything about that? You know somebody that needs to hear these powerful words today, that receive this powerful message, please ask them to tune in. We're going to give you guys a few moments just to send out those confidential messages because we know my divas in the community, we know about supporting one another, right? We know about pride. It gets us nowhere. It keeps us down. In my mother's keepers messaging and the whole purpose of everything we do, our mission is to improve the quality of living for our folks that are living in communities that have exposure to uh, mental health matters and mental health issues. Guys, in my mother's keeper is constantly sharing with you that mental health matters. And I know you've got to be tired of hearing that now, by now. But there's a reason why. We want it ingrained in your brain because we need the dialogue for mental health to be dialed up so that we can start on the community level being more accountable for helping our community members. Guys, hurt people hurt people. And everywhere in my mother's keeper goes, every circle that we're in and out of, all we're hearing is that we've got to do something about this violence. Guys, we want to stop the violence. Guys, we know about the stigma surrounding mental health and the matters that are involving mental health. So how is it possible, would you please help in my mother's keeper to understand, how is it possible that we can do something about the violence without addressing the underlying concerns and issues that are affecting everyday people in our community, guys? I'm just trying to keep it real. I'm your girl. It's Veterans Day. Uh-oh, i got to take care of some business, Cheryl. <laughs> forgive me. Happy, happy Veterans Day to all our beautiful soldiers out there, all of our wonderful soldiers and their families who sacrificed day in and day out to all our loved ones that we've lost. Dear Ronald David Williams, I am your legacy and I will forever, forever continue to do well in your eyes. I love you and I thank you for your many years of service and I thank you for being a wonderful father. Guys, and my mother's keeper cares about the mental health in our community. We've got to talk about these uncomfortable topics. Guys, everything we do is to make sure that we can stabilize our families, lend a helping hand, um, lend a listening ear. But more importantly, in our community, we're taught to keep things quiet, to tuck things under the rug. And those of you that had the fortunate pleasure of reaching a certain age, and I won't dare age myself, but those of us that have lived long enough out in these streets, we understand the importance of getting rid of those secrets. Those secrets are killing us, guys. And I want you to know something. You're not alone and you're not by yourself. We've got to get away from the stigma. We've got to get away from being embarrassed. And my mother's keeper is out here every day putting a face on what you guys think you understand mental health to be. Why? Because it's dangerous when we start labeling and pointing people out Folks that really need care will not come out and speak on it because they're concerned that you're going to talk about them, laugh at them, or make fun of them. And we guys, we know domestic violence is no laughing matter. And you're going to find out a little more in detail in just a few moments. Guys, we're down here on the waterfront, 800 Main Avenue Southwest. Uh, we're down here at our community partners' offices, um, the Waterfront Insurance Network. Uh, they do all kinds of insurance quotes, and you know me, you know and my mother's keeper. We're about keeping the community educated and empowered so that we can hold you accountable for the quality of life that you want to live. 
Guys, we are hosting Network Mondays here on the waterfront. It's going on now as we speak. Mr. Rick Washington of the Beauty News is here with wonderful media packages for uh, uh, circulation in that hair care industry. If you've got a product or a small business and you're trying to get the word out, guys, these are the kinds of things you want to come down and be a part of. Um, we're also offering opportunity for on-the-spot podcast uh, 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 exposure. So, guys, there's no reason why we shouldn't all be winning. We've got to be able to create, at create atmosphere is we can come together, talk about the tough things, support one another, and then prosper. Okay? So this is in my Mother's Keeper segment on domestic violence, sexual violence, community violence. Know anything about it? Of course you do. And my Mother's Keeper does work east of the river daily. And we are hearing the sirens. We're hearing our cries from our moms and our dads. We're losing our babies, and we've got to do something about the violence. And we all have to play our part and be accountable. Um, guys, without any further ado, I would like for you to join me in welcoming Miss Cheryl Spann. Cheryl, welcome. Welcome. Thank you so much for taking the time. And I want to give Cheryl a disclaimer because she's a wonderfully educated young woman and she's going to give you some powerful information. She was feeling under the weather and it's a holiday and even still she persevered because she knows the importance of getting this very powerful message out. So the first thing I want to do is I want to give Cheryl an opportunity because you've heard from me already and you've already got your girlfriends on the line and you've already reached over to that, that friend of yours that doesn't want to talk about it that you know needs to hear stuff like this. Come on, Emma. Come on, Emma. I need your help out there. Cheryl, without any further ado, would you please help our Facebook audience and our listening audience understand um, who you are in your day-to-day um, why domestic violence, sexual violence, and community violence is something that crosses your desk. And then give us a little bit more about who it is that you work with and how it is you do what you do. Sure. Thank you, Rhonda. Oh, no problem. So um, I work as a training coordinator for Ujima. <clears throat> Excuse me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and Ujima is a national center on violence against women in the black community mm -hmm, and across mm -hmm. the diaspora. That would include Afro-Caribbean, Afro-Latinx, okay, okay. African immigrants, and descendants of the Middle Passage, African American. Interesting. Okay. 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 <clears throat> so that's Ujima, and the Person Center is a project of Ujima. Okay. So initially, the Person Center was a nonprofit organization founded by the late Amelia Messalides, okay. okay. who was a licensed clinical social social worker. Um, who saw the need for services, culturally specific services, uh, for the African immigrant community, particularly the Ethiopian community here, which is a large community here. Interesting. Uh, prior to her transition of last year, that's when I came on board, mm -hmm. she was able to convey her wishes to her board mm -hmm. and with uh, Karma Cotman, our esteemed executive director, of Ujima and the DC Coalition Against Domestic Violence. Mm -hmm. So I was called in to dissolve the nonprofit mm -hmm. and to continue her legacy okay. in addressing the needs for African immigrants and African residents in the district. Okay. And as a result, we ended up with the Person Center, which is a project of Ujima. Okay. 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 One other piece to that. Um, the Person Center is incubated in Ujima and is also a member of the DC Coalition Against Domestic Violence, which is a federally recognized mm -hmm. member organization, state funded, with over 17 organizations that provide social services and life services for survivors in the District, uh, of, uh, district of Columbia. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So my role basically is created like a hybrid to kind of cross sectors okay. where there's intersection okay. around violence with mainstream providers uh, such as Becky's Fun, House of Ruth, okay. Uh, okay. just to name a few, Dash, and then um, to also work with Ujima mm -hmm. nationally by working with the diaspora locally here in the District of, of Columbia. Okay, wow, you've got to be a really important young lady to carry on all of those uh, <laughs> missions. It sounds like it. those are some pretty important words there, Cheryl. But I mean, really breaking it down, you know, my heart just when I, I had the pleasure of hearing Cheryl speak um, over at a uh, forum in uh, Mayfair uh, Mansions not too long ago. And one of the things that impressed me is that there's all this wonderful information and ladies out there, gentlemen out there who are also uh, victims of the 
abuse um, and children. I want you guys to understand that the statistics in the African American community are so alarming. Um, and obviously, she, Cheryl won't be able to cover them all, but I just want to read a few uh, pieces of information to you, and then I want to direct you to the Ujima website so that we can start to all get involved and play more of an active role. I had a very wonderful time with a uh, minister at the, with the First Baptist Church of Glen Arden this past weekend. Um, we attended an affair for uh, um, Dr. Ivy up at Howard University, and one of the things I was impressed with is that the clergy is spending a lot of energy and effort um, immersing themselves in these community-based um, uh, matters, and I'm excited to see that because when a church throws their arms around it, generally we see more resources come in to play, and on the community level, we don't care where they're coming from as long as they're coming. And so one of the things I wanted I, that struck me um, as being very interesting and why I wanted to be able to bring you before the Facebook audience, because I don't know that if we're not here these, these are statistics enough if we get it. Guys, um, black women and sexual assault, there's a uh, fact sheet here um, that uh, Cheryl is going to help us to understand where we can get all this wonderful information from. For every black woman who reports rape, at least 15 black women do not report. Think about that for a minute. For every one of us that know someone that's been raped, there are 15 other women that we're not familiar with that have also probably gone through this process most likely and have not reported it. And, and that's a really interesting statistic. In the U.S., 38% of black women experience sexual violence other than rape during their lifetime. Think about that for a minute. Because when we hear the word sexual violence, we automatically associate it with rape. But if we're listening to the statistics here, and we are, it's saying that 38% of black women are experiencing additional, additional sexual violent acts outside of just rape. We've got to find our voices, and we've got to speak out, and we've got to become the village that our folks need in order that they can receive the proper care. Guys, I want to do a short question and answer session with Cheryl just to kind of help you understand a little bit more in detail, um, again, about the coalition with uh, Ujima and obviously the person center um, um, resources that are sitting inside of that uh, organization. Um, when we talk about Ujima, first and foremost, what should our viewing uh, uh, Facebook audience understand Ujima? to represent? Ujima. Ujima. First of all, we've got to learn how to say it. it. Thank there you. is Ujima. Okay. Ujima. Okay. Um, however, when we talk about Ujima, mm -hmm. uh, which is the third principle, as you well know, okay. of Kwanzaa, mm -hmm. which means collective work and responsibility. Thank you. So in my professional and personal opinion, we epitomize that principle. Okay. Our main charge is to empower service providers, policymakers, and advocates and the community at large to address the unique challenges in the black community okay. as it relates to community, sexual and domestic and intimate partner violence. So that's essentially um, what we do. And again, like I said, it's a very interesting collaboration and partnership. I want to also add that Ujima uh, in 2021 will spin off on its own mm -hmm. as a national resource center here in the District of Columbia. Awesome. So we're working on that as well. So I want to break that down a, a two things. You talked about the specifics of care needed in an African American based community. Can you help us identify with how that is different as it relates to any other community when you say specific? Is there, are there certain things that our communities are required when it relates to getting care or dealing with domestic and sexual and community violence? Yes, so with the African immigrant okay. population in particular, um, there are gaps in services just like the black community. Mm. So through our research, education, and work group through Ujima, and then with the um, Domestic Violence Research Collective mm -hmm. or Collaborative, uh, what we found basically is when it comes to uh, the diaspora, mm -hmm. There are culturally specific services and nuances mm. that we need to address based on yeah based on their cultural norms and their cultural beliefs. Uh, domestic violence in the diaspora is considered taboo. Mm -hmm. Likewise, in the black community, it wasn't until the latter part of 
mid to latter part of the 20th century, we started addressing mm -hmm. our mental health. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, so we're starting to see common themes across the diaspora when it comes to addressing um, domestic violence. For example, when we're talking to the Ethiopian community, mm -hmm. um, typically they consider domestic violence as just one of those marital mm -hmm. problems mm -hmm. um, like any other mm -hmm. problem uh, in marriage. And so oftentimes they go to their elders mm -hmm. and clergy mm -hmm. and then they're sent back home. Interesting. So. And, and it's interesting that you touch on that. I want to share with you, I was literally just in a uh, Stop the Violence conference and we were talking about the dangers of uh, counseling and sending folk back home in domestic violence circumstances. The, the, the percentages are so large as it relates to women who go back mm -hmm. and don't get out. And so it's really interesting that we have these conversations because uh, I would imagine uh, someone who feels trapped already who is not necessarily of this country or of this understanding and then on top of that it's a cultural understanding I would imagine that would feel that much more hindering in right. terms of coming out or speaking out how do you work with those uh, so we're working we're still continuing to do our research and part a large part of that is to share the information mm -hmm. by empowering our advocates mm -hmm. um, such as city council, mm -hmm. um, they are one of our major champions in uh, in this fight. To How end. so? That's great to hear. Well, um, it's a report card that came out through the coalition called Surviving DC for Survivors. Mm -hmm. That and there was a bill that was introduced by uh, Council Member Nadeau, okay, and championed by Council Member Allen, okay, uh, okay, to look at the services in the District of Columbia to address the gaps in the services, to look at additional resources, and they have to be culturally appropriate. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So one of the largest barriers in terms of culturally specific dealing with Asian Pacific Islanders, um, African immigrants, is language access. Mm -hmm. So what we found was whenever um, the, the survivor is in need of services, mm -hmm. oftentimes they'll have a family member come to translate. That doesn't necessarily go over well, mm. um, and if he and or she calls, but particularly um, an African immigrant female spouse calls, um, the police, by the time the police uh, respond, mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. he may not be able to speak, it depends on the language, and then there's that intimidation and that control, mm -hmm. right, and verbal mm -hmm. abuse, Absolutely. right, power Absolutely. of control. Absolutely. So, then the call goes undocumented as in terms of um, domestic violence or intimate partner violence. So those are the those are the nuances that we're looking at. Mm -hmm. More importantly, Rhonda, it's more about learning. Um, we are culturally competent, but nobody knows culture in Absolutely. its entirety, right? Absolutely. We're always learning. Absolutely. So that's what we're doing here at the coalition with Ujima mm -hmm. and with the Person Center. Okay. okay, okay. And then how long has Ujima and this relationship in essence been around or been in existence as far as you are aware? The relationship w between Ujima and, so Ujima was founded in 2016. 2016. Um, okay. Yes, and uh, like I mentioned before, um, the late Miss Missaladies yeah. had already established the Person Center. Okay. And the okay. reason why the two had come together, mm -hmm. right, was because um, she wanted to continue her legacy. Awesome. So Ujima is going into its fifth year in wow. 2021. Okay. And uh, TPC has been around a lot longer. Wow. And the coalition, of course, has mm -hmm. been around, exactly. Mm -hmm. So the three have come together, and I'm told that there's um, maybe less than a half dozen um, other incubated programs like this. So this incubation comes from, let me say this, from Health and Human Services. Okay, okay. So we're like a pilot. We are a pilot program mm -hmm. to address the violence in the community at large okay. across the diaspora. Okay. So we have their full support, just like we do locally with awesome. the city council. Awesome. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm sure there are folks out there that are saying, okay, Domestic violence, I get it, but will you tell me from you all's you know, perspective, it was important to understand the nuances of how you guys are coming together to provide this great work. Now, because it sounds like you guys have a whole gamut of, of, of uh, 
circumstances that fall in front of you and that you guys kind of have to dissect and understand where the specifics are as it relates to culture and as it relates to just mm -hmm. our overall system. My question to you is, can you help us in a, if there is a simplistic understanding of what is domestic violence? What, what, what falls on that radar for you all? And then as it relates to community violence, and then as it rolls over and becomes a sexual violence, it's really important for me to help because there are some relationships, there's some individuals who really are not maybe understanding that they are perpetrators of this, you know, exactly. thing. And so, could you help us understand? It's very complex. Um, domestic violence is a pattern of abusive behavior mm -hmm. where the perpetrator uh, basically has control, power, and control mm -hmm. over their partner and typically that's someone intimate. Okay. And it doesn't mean it has to be someone just romantically, someone you're dating, it's, it could be dating, it could be marriage. Okay. Intimate means someone that you know, it, mm -hmm. and family violence. Okay. That's where intimate partner violence also comes in. And then later life um, yeah. violence, because yeah. people okay. are living longer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So abusive relationships can be complex and can include uh, control, intimidation, and verbal abuse to an intimate partner. Mm -hmm. Although that happens, this is the area where it's least reported because it's hard to really measure control mm -hmm. and intimidation, right? Mm -hmm. You kind of have to be there and, mm -hmm. and, and at the time observe. that it's happening. Mm -hmm. So although we don't really have hard data, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it's also um, extremely dangerous as well. Mm -hmm. So oftentimes people will ask, well, well, if he or she, because um, men are underreported, but they're also um, indicators where they're also experiencing sexual and um, intimate partner uh, uh, violence, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. well, why don't they leave? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you know we get that question all the time. <laughs> yeah. you, it's it, complex. The very fact that they may leave could lead to, yeah, death. Um, um, the outcomes aren't great. That much we do know. So we, what we do is we basically, uh, we have this mantra whenever we are engaging with survivors mm -hmm. across the spectrum. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. A survivor is the subject matter expert of their mm -hmm. experience. Absolutely. So we allow them to drive and we allow them to tell the providers that are serving um, them what their needs are mm -hmm. and then we take it from there. Mm -hmm. And it may involve safety planning while he or she is still in that relationship. Okay. until they're ready. So statistically, um, it's been shown that a victim of domestic violence will attempt to leave at least five to seven times before they actually leave. Before they actually leave. Yeah. And so I, if I heard you correctly, it sounds like you guys are working with uh, victims in these circumstances even while they are still in oh, the yeah. circumstance. Definitely. So how would I, if I'm listening and I'm hearing and this is something that I'm tempted to make that third or fifth uh, attempt, how would I affect Ujima's process and do, do I have to be a specific understanding culturally in order to make a call to a specific direction no. or do I just pick up the you pick up the phone okay and you know um, and then we have the main number I'll share a little later okay and then based on the requests or the nature of the inquiry okay. uh, we have a pretty savvy team they'll okay. direct to any one of us and um, we'll take it from there okay and I'm imagining that in Ujima's process there is safe housing and there is protection of identity and so with this is with the person center. The person center, okay. That and we do have case related. management. Yes. Okay. There's never enough um, oh, don't safe, I know affordable it. housing. No. So to that's that, a whole nother show, Cheryl. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is but true. It's the truth, though. But we d we are working with the housing providers that provide shelter to the homeless population because okay. within that population, there is DV and Absolutely. IPV. Absolutely. So. We got a contract with the Community Partnership, thanks to HUD. HUD Great. is on board as well. Great. And what HUD has basically done is they've incentivized mm -hmm. the training. Awesome. Because as you know, it's not enough just to have housing if there's trauma. No. And then when right. they show up again in the programs. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. Um, especially given the statistics, we kind of know we're going to see them again. Oh, you know? exactly. And that's unfortunate. Let me um, also say, Rhonda. Please, Cheryl, please. Um, there, there are moments, we were told, um, in the trainings where, you know, a case manager, a social worker will really work hard to get a voucher or secure a spot for a survivor, and there are times they don't want to, yeah. 
they don't want to necessarily. You, and, and how do you what do you, how do you deal with that? Because I'm I'm sure a large percentage of our audience out there is probably sitting in that, you know, pivotal yeah. positioning, and fear is is a lot of that. And so exactly, how do we help them to understand that? pushing through that fear and, and actually reaching out to you all is actually the direction. Well, that's the beauty of working with the shelter and okay. the hotel workers that provide shelter okay. to this population as well. Great. So basically, we're looking at the cause of trauma, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right, mm -hmm. when they come, because right. being homeless is trauma, oh, most definitely. and then most how definitely. does it show up? And then at that point, we, um, we train basically on three evidence-based practices. Mm -hmm person-centered person approach mm -hmm. in addressing trauma in the shelter system and um, privacy and confidentiality mm. and then choice and that's about respecting one's agency dignity mm. and self-determination I love that I that's love what that. that's about you know <laughs> I'm gonna be nice <laughs> but I'll tell you that when I heard you speak one of the things that just resonated with me was the genuineness of, of the subject matter and your presentation of the information. A lot of times in the community where my mother's keepers don't work, we're not even able to reach the root or understand that what or where the motivation for the problem is coming from because we're not able to reach the individual. Mm -hmm. Trust is really huge in, in our communities and when you've had folks violate your trust or when you've been in environments where that's not easy to come by, um, it makes it challenging to trust that this is another organization that's actually going to come in and actually, you know, help. And so one of the things as an advocate that is always discerning for me is trying to figure out how I can prop as many of these wonderful resources up in front of our folks and say, hey, guess what? What do you got to lose? You know what I'm saying? Because we want to be able to, as I said, improve the quality of living. But I don't know how we do that until we can reach the individual and establish a dialogue. You know, we got all these sound bites out here, show and folks are still hurting and folks are not opening up. And so I'm just wondering, how are you guys dealing with those uh, matters of trust? Or That's where the trauma-informed care training mm -hmm. comes in, okay. right? And basically, it's putting that person in the center mm -hmm. and addressing their needs mm -hmm. based on their experience, mm -hmm. right? Even when they, from the moment they hit that door, mm -hmm. um, just asking them, what's your preferred pronouns, mm -hmm. um, he, she, mm -hmm. she, her, hers, nice. um, explaining their roles at the time of intake and mm -hmm. an assessment. Mm -hmm. And if you're a mandated reporter, they need to know that up front, mm -hmm. again, because it's about respecting that choice. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's something they don't want to share right now. Absolutely. And so by the mere fact of asking, then we start to you know build that trust and the rapport, because right. typically no one typically asks. Right. We're asking for a lot of information, right. personal information, Absolutely. in the first half hour, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so th there again we start to see the recidivism, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then we even have providers that believe that um, <clears throat> because of the recidivism, <clears throat> excuse me, mm -hmm. yeah. that the clients and the survivors are, are gaming the system. So I take a moment to ask. How, Thank you for addressing that. Yeah, I mean, you know, I we do that. Um, our trainings are more like this. Mm -hmm. You know, we could do the PowerPoint. We decided we get <clears throat> mm -hmm. more bang for our buck when we have a very transparent Absolutely. conversation. Absolutely. And then we have exercises built in there in the, in the training to basically expose our implicit biases. Mm -hmm. So if you feel that your client or your survivor is taking advantage, mm -hmm. I will put a pin mm -hmm. and we will have that discussion. Mm -hmm. Tell me what that looks like. Mm -hmm. And they will. Mm -hmm. So typically, um, the comeback is, you know, we really don't know. This is mm -hmm. what survival looks like. Absolutely. Absolutely. They're and, surviving. And you know, and I know you get it, there's a tug of war with those of us in the community that mean well and we do mm -hmm. care and we do our part. But boy, can we have trouble putting that judgment aside when folks are really, when we just really don't understand we it and we all, want it to be exactly something right. different. Um, boy, do I love that. Um, because one of the things as an advocate that I'm always challenged with is trying to protect that individual from being re victimized. Huh? And so a lot of the times I'm seeing it firsthand is that, you know, the, the, the person-centered care uh, attitude is absent, <laughs> absent. I've accompanied my community members down to Virginia Williams, and not to call anybody that, I'm just speaking on it because we're talking about um, domestic violence and shelter and homelessness, and a lot of our citizens are affecting these organizations, and we would not be uh, who we are if we weren't going to be transparent in our work. 
And when we go to the community level, we go to help and we share with our community members that you can trust in us, that if you're sharing these unfortunate situations, we want to speak on it, we want to go in. Um, because in some instances, Cheryl, um, the voices are captured and so they're not mm -hmm. able to speak what it is that they're going through, so they get frustrated and they shut down. Mm -hmm. The reality is, is that the nature of homelessness in our city as it relates to domestic violence circumstances, homelessness, um, you name it, we've got to deal with this. And we've got to call a thing a thing if we're really going to get people help. And, and so one of the things that concerns me, as you shared, coming through our shelter and our systems where we already know we have a strange system. We know mm -hmm. that there's some things we could be doing better. You know, this is not that type of a show. But the reality is that we've got so many people that are out there that are lacking the resources that are stuck in these circumstances um, that need a little more compassion. I myself came off the sidelines because my mom trying to get help down in our uh, social services, just the lack of empathy and the lack of education for. That, that's it, the lack of it. Oh. So if there's no education, mm -hmm. there's no empathy. no empathy. And then, you know, we let the providers know that they're already doing it. Mm -hmm. They just don't call it. Absolutely. person center Absolutely. and um, they do have an obligation to their funders and we understand that too so we're not telling them to go back to your respective <laughs> agencies and start a revolution we're just saying start at a systems level mm -hmm. systems change mm -hmm. programmatic just ask yeah when it does just just ask you know is is this office okay yeah. um, would you like to sit towards the wall versus the door um, even, you know, as a cult part of our culture, we shake hands. Powerful. But if you are a survivor of sexual violence, mm -hmm. you don't want to be touched. So right. you have to ask. That's so right. throughout that training, mm -hmm. when in doubt, mm -hmm. ask. ask. That's right. Right? And I love this. And this is why I asked you to be. And thank you so much for being here. Oh, it is important that the professionals speak up and share the understandings because our folks are out there and they're listening. And when they do see that you care, then the walls come down and then we're able to truly start helping folks. And so all too often, the first thing I hear um, is the rejection is so real. Um, the lack of respect, mm -hmm. the lack of education. But these are the people that are put in charge of my care. And so I'm supposed to humble to them, but there's no respect to me. This accountability thing, <laughs> depending on whose circle I'm in, it can go either way. But the reality is, is that we got all figured this out and come together. And the reality of having you on today was to reassure our community members that there is a structure, there is an empathy, there is a way through this, and there are qualified, competent folks involved that are getting all of our agencies on board. Um, you've heard HUD is involved. You've heard the city council. Um, you've heard Allen, who's a six. Uh, Ward 6 and so. uh, mm -hmm. Nadeau Ward 1. Mm -hmm. So um, it's important for our citizens to understand that it takes a village to yes. get through these things. And if we know that we've got professional, uh, empathetic uh, 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 folk out here to receive you and help you, there's no reason for you to stay in these circumstances. We don't want you in harm's way. Um, however we need to help you, we want to help you. And not everybody knows how to, but I want you to know that in my mother's keeper are in touch with folks that will know how to help you. So when in doubt, you can always, always call in my mother's keeper. Um, 240-274-9436 is our number. And www.mimotherskeeper.com. I'm saying that because I want you guys to know that we will walk this walk with you. We want everyone to live their best quality of life out there. Now, community violence, we talk about domestic violence, and I would imagine that we've hit that mark enough that folks are starting to come into the understanding they believe mm -hmm. <laughs> of what that is. Touch on community violence and why that might be a little bit different than what folks typically understand it to be. Uh, some exposure to intentional interpersonal acts in the community. Mm. Okay, against, <clears throat> excuse me, it could be a school, mm -hmm. as, you, as we well know. It could be a mosque. Mm -hmm. It could be terrorism. It could be a riot. Mm -hmm. It could be rape. Mm -hmm. um, it could be bullying. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's just a plethora okay. of activities that we kind of know. Um, and if we don't know, we typically find out eventually through social media and the news, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. And um, to that point, um, I make it my business 
yeah. not to. Yeah. Because eventually I'm going to get that information mm -hmm. um, just based on the research. I also want to let you know that Ujima has a research and education work group mm -hmm. that is across the nation nice. um, that is pretty much spearheaded by Howard University. Mm -hmm. They're all black researchers. Nice. Because for all too long, we have not been the gatekeepers of our own population. Well, let's just talk about that <laughs> since we're here talking about, you know, wonderful gatekeeping information. I understand that we just swore in the first African-American woman to head the American Medical Association, and they tell me wow. that she's a former psychiatrist and sensitive to the, you know, mental health matters of our community. How awesome and exciting is that? to embrace, and I, I just heard that over the weekend, and then I saw the, uh, se uh, 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 yeah, a headline, that's, it's that new, it's that recent, and if you're thinking my mother's keeper is not, congratulations, <laughs> we're so proud, because, you know, we're right. the nation's capital, and, you know, we've been stomping up and down, in April, we delivered our proclamation to Congresswoman Norton, we had had enough of this disparity in health care, and mm -hmm. the standards, and you walk into a center here in the city, and the lights are dim, and you, 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 feel some kind of way just sitting in the waiting room waiting to see your therapist. And so I'm sitting there and I'm just wondering when do we address the standard of care in the nation's capital, you know? We're doing and, that. And, and, and and that's why it's important to do this. Because there are folks like me who don't want to be part of the problem. We want to be a part of the solution. So we're going to ask the question because our community members are holding us accountable to do so. But then we're also going to come out and do the work and we're going to hold ourselves accountable and hold you guys accountable to come and help us bring these messages forward. So that's why I'm always so thankful and so appreciative of folks such as yourself. <laughs> you know, we're such a divisive city and, and we've likewise. got... Yeah, it, it, I, I mean it, Cheryl, because, you know, until we do more of this, our folk are not going to get the care. We've got a lot of cliques going on in this political town of ours, and I don't understand that. 8.9 something percent was our voting representation in Ward A. Oh, that's another show. We're coming. <laughs> you know, we've got to be able to be right. a part of our narrative and we've got to tell our own stories and we've got to hold people accountable so we can get the care that we need so that we can succeed in the way that we'd like to succeed. And I just, you know, I appreciate opportunities to do shows like this because it's important that the information meets the need mm -hmm. so that folks can start getting empowered about doing something different. Exactly. You do not have to stay in your circumstances in this day and age, guys. We are out here and we're doing the best we can to bring this information to you, but it takes a village and we need your hand. Um, Cheryl, well, we, this will be a great opportunity to segue and get them some information about how to get in touch with Ujima. Let me just make sure. I have center. It. That's right. So with, uh, yes, with the Person Center, mm -hmm. there's a link in Ujima's website, which is www.ujimacommunity.org. Okay. I believe it's backslash, mm -hmm. give me a moment, the hyphen person hyphen center. Okay. Great. And then for the coalition, I also want to add that we have what's called the Victims Assistance Network in the District of Columbia. Well, what does that look like? Please share that. So I'm those are all of the member organizations that provide oh. services. Yeah. Oh, and there's close to 50. So we meet quarterly okay. at the OAG's office okay. to keep everyone updated okay. on what we're doing and how we can support each other. And so, I want to make sure the OJ Office of Attorney General, General okay, yes. we want them to know yes. that this is... That's where we yeah, have our meetings okay. um, quarterly. And so if you go to the DCCADV, DC Coalition Against Domestic Violence dot org website, okay. you'll see all of the providers listed okay. there with the hotline as well. Okay. And after to this today's segment, you're going to be able to find a link on the My Mother's Keeper website, so it'll take you straight into Ujima, and then I'm sure we'll be able to get you into the Person Center and obviously in touch with Cheryl or one of her other wonderful colleagues that are out here doing this work. Um, and My Mother's Keepers out here, community, we want to <laughs> yeah, make sure you that you know that we want you empowered because we want you to be able to live your best quality of life. Now, I just want to dial in a little bit more on the, uh, if you could expound a little bit on statistics that jump to mind for you, because I imagine you see all kinds of numbers, but yeah. the statistics that come to mind for you as it relates to the black females being the largest percentage, hear me, black females are the largest percentage of demographic who receives domestic violence services. So. Somebody out there knows somebody, has to, with a largest percentage of group of individuals receiving these services. Sure, could you talk to us a little bit about what that looks like for you and just wherever that takes so you? So locally with the Persons Center, um, 
During their lifetime, 39% of women living in D.C. have experienced sexual violence, physical violence, and or stalking perpetrated by their intimate partner. During their lifetime, 50% of the women in the District of Columbia have experienced psychological aggression, okay, perpetrated by their intimate partner. And the young people between the ages of 16 and 24, of course, are a greater risk. Mm -hmm. And within that age group, 24% of the girls and young women in high school have reported experiencing physical and sexual dating violence. And oh, we babies. also do, yeah, we also do teen dating violence during Teen Dating Violence Month in the district and across um, the diaspora. We also, um, we just did a PSA, public service announcement, uh, in combat, combating sexual violence on historically black colleges nice. and campuses. Oh, so that'll be coming out, I'll let you know. That's so awesome. Ujima basically went to the HBCU campuses and had that discussion with, nice. with the um, students in terms of what they wanted mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. their needs. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And so we're, gonna, we're still kind of tweaking that um, and then we'll go live, it'll be on our, on our website. So that's kind of you know, and then again we don't um, we don't discriminate. There are men. There's you Absolutely. know same gender Absolutely. violence. It's Absolutely. a human phenomenon. That's what I. It really is. I don't really understand it, and I do. And I also want to address your comment around black women receiving more services, mm -hmm. nearly not as much, but a large part of that has to do with I mentioned earlier the research education work group mm -hmm. at Howard. Howard did a. Um, study uh, over the past, I think, 10, 15 years called the Human Genome Project. Mm. And what they found out is that those of us who are descendants of the Middle Passage, after 400 years of racism and trauma and internalizing all of that, mm -hmm. by the sixth, seventh generation, mm -hmm. it becomes cellular and a mm -hmm. part of our DNA. So that's what we call intergenerational transmission of those patterns and that behavior, right. unbeknownst to us. That's, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. That, that, that's just amazing information. Six, seven generations, we just don't even have a chance. We don't have a shot considering our history. We, you know, it's just there. You know, and so we've got to work hard at this. We've got to be communicating. And so it's just kind of, when I hear you say that and I hear the research and I think about how we've been raised, you know, you keep that inside this. What goes on inside this house stays inside of this house, and you don't talk. And you and, and, and we become a society that lives in those secrets, and the reality of trying to overcome something that you didn't have any control to begin with. And it impacts your our physical oh, being. So when we look goodness. at gastrointestinal, yes. diabetes, hypertension, yes. I mean, it's just a long list. Yes. Aches, migraines, all of that is attributed to having internalized the oppression because it's gone it's a wound that's gone untreated and when you don't treat a wound it doesn't get better mm -mm. it gets worse hurt people hurt people guys we've got to start talking we've got, got to start helping one another sure this has been so wonderful and i feel like you know <laughs> we've just scratched the surface but the point of today's uh session was one to raise the awareness mm -hmm. of the detailed work that you guys are doing around the city um, and around the nation mm -hmm. to help a specific population, our population of women that are seemingly needing these services more so than anyone. Mm -hmm. And so it's important that we also share in our accountabilities for trying to figure out how we can help uh, more of our women. I know with mental health and, and a lot of the research and you know when we're in our classes and such, uh, it's amazing when we understand the effects of domestic violence and how uh, mental health, the, the correlation of it for mental health. Now, the one thing I want to understand from your perspective, stigma is something that we deal with on the mental health side that's really, you know, something that <laughs> systemically mm -hmm. is just stifling. From a domestic violence standpoint, how do you, when you guys are viewing or collecting data or interacting with your communities and things like that, is stigma something that you're feeling is, is Big time. prevalent? So, yeah, again, that has been um, uh, a lot of research and work groups and working together. So back to uh, homelessness. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. whenever we encounter a client and or survivor in need of safe housing mm -hmm. through the traditional means, all of their private information is entered into a universal database. Mm -hmm. So that means if I come to you for one thing, mm -hmm. that information that I gave you May end up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So Tina Terranova, she's our data analyst. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we just got licensed and we just got acceptance to work with um, Department of Mental Health nice. um, to track nice. the legal requests that come through. Nice. Right? So, and then we, um, Ujima Coalition, the Person Center, particularly the Person Center and the Coalition, we have a separate database mm. because it's about safe. Mm. So if a, if a survivor, you know, we ask questions like, you know, how would you like to receive your information? Mm -hmm. Because if you're being stalked, you don't want to use that's your cell phone. We have, don't, yeah, right. sometimes, you know, especially with African immigrants, um, they'll have four or five phones within a month. Mm. Um, certain survivors, if they want to be called Mickey Mouse, we'll call them Mickey Mouse mm -hmm. when they're talking or you know, engaging. Again, it's, it's, it's back to person-centered, person -centered. Yeah. Yeah. trauma-informed care. Yeah. So we're learning as we go along, which is something else other than cultural competency, it's called cultural humility. Mm, yeah. I know what we know, but we're here to find out what we don't know so I we can be that. a better service. Cultural humility, guys. Yeah. That's awesome. Well, Cheryl, I, I tell you, this this has really transcended so many different levels for me. I'm, I'm excited about the opportunity to, and guys, I'm sorry if you hear noise in the background, we're down here on the waterfront and they've got the Network Mondays going on and folks are all over the building and uh, engaging the space and you should have been here, you know what I was talking about. We do it every Monday down here on the waterfront, 800 Main Avenue, just as a segue for the noise in the background, my apologies. But Cheryl, I just really, I'm so excited because one of the things that I often hear with victims on a community level, because they're my mother's keeper, we get the calls for advocacy and we get the calls for the domestic violence cases as well and one of my challenges is already is always understanding who else is involved mm -hmm. you know how much protection have we provided the individual and how insulated is the individual mm -hmm. because there's so many moving parts and a lot of times we find in the district with a lot of the services that mean well you know a lot of times we're not all on the same page and so a lot of times the person in the middle that we're there for is kind of their their needs and uh, 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 what we should be focusing on sometimes get lost in the mm -hmm. haze of what we've called a system and, and what the procedures are so again I'm very excited to introduce the understanding of the very necessary work that you guys are doing because I know in the short period of time that in my mother's keeper has been out on those streets um, in the last few years We've met quite a few of you young ladies, some that will speak and some that will not. I'm hoping that today's session is an opportunity for you guys to understand we're in this together. There is no judgment and there is no reason for you to have to stay in a situation that you are not feeling safe about. Um, we've got resources here. Um, and my mother's keeper will hold your hand and walk with you. And it's just a one step at a time situation, but you will be at the center of those decisions. Alrighty, domestic violence as a community, we've got to say no, we've got to stop, we've got to get to the bottom line understanding of what it is that's driving and motivating us to be so violent towards one another. My babies are being bullied in the school, they're being uh, accosted in the sexual mm -hmm. arena, they're being introduced to things that should not be, and a lot of times we're dealing with adults who haven't had the help that they need. Guys, all of this is connected, and we learned a wonderful word, our words today, cultural humility. My goodness, cultural humility. And if we can humble on the professional mm -hmm. side and admit that we don't know it all, then we need some humility out there in the community so that we can help each other, help one another. There's a lot of anger out there. People care, and we've got to learn to how to let people care. And we've got to learn how to be in touch with our emotions without being valid. All righty. That's MI Mother's Keeper's Mental Intelligent TV for you. We're going to come out. We're going to raise the awareness. We're going to do the education. We're going to bring you competent, quality, beautiful professionals in here to talk to you about such important, uncomfortable situations, subject matter. Guys, there's no one that's going to help us but us. There's no one's going to save us but us. There's no magic potion, magic pill. If you're out there and you're hurting, speak up. Speak up. Cheryl, yeah. is there any final understanding, anything that we haven't touched on that you know that our community members should be of the understanding of before we wrap this wonderful session up? Because I could ask you a million questions, but I won't. <laughs> well, if there are organizations um, that are interested in working with um, this population in particular, 
um, culturally specific services. We do provide technical assistance, um, resource development, Great. education and outreach, um, back sheets, uh, whatever it takes to get that program, that organization mm -hmm. on its feet, on its feet, excuse me, mm -hmm. to address the needs in their respective communities. I love that. So all my wonderful principals out there, all my wonderful social workers out there, all my wonderful pastors, ministers, all my wonderful leaders out there that are in front of populations who could benefit from this beautiful and necessary information, please do follow up. We depend on you to help us get this word out. We've got to save our people so that we can get them to the polls to vote, so that we can get folks in place to help them make decisions for things that they care about and that's going to change their lives. You heard it, and my mother's keeper said it. <laughs> Cheryl, before you get out of here, there's a spreadlovedc.org and our little purple hearts and all this wonderful good stuff. Talk to us a little bit about the Purple Heart Campaign and the spreadlove.org. Sure. Ujima and the Person Center work very closely and collaboratively with the coalition mm -hmm. um, during the Domestic Violence Awareness Month. Mm -hmm. um, which I believe just had its 30th anniversary last month. Wow, 38. 30 so this is a very creative way in engaging stakeholders, advocates, mm -hmm. the community at large, mm -hmm. and spreading the love. And again, when you go on our website, you'll see a group of us. And so typically during DVAM, mm -hmm. we kick it off with Spread the Love DC. And okay. we kick it off with... Um, it's a it's a it's called paint the town purple. So we show up in all of our coalition regalia, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. we cover all of the metro stops mm -hmm. on October first okay. during rush hour mm -hmm. to raise awareness. Raise awareness, mm -hmm. and of course, purple being regal. I mean, exactly. my goodness, I love <laughs> that. Hey guys, just to recap: www.ujimacommunity.org. Community is spelled out. That's www.ujimacommunity.org. You also can dial 1-844-77-UJIMA. Guys, their mission is to mobilize the community to respond to and to end domestic, sexual, and community violence in the black community. We need your help. Thank you so very much, Cheryl. I mean, Thank this you has been so awesome. Us. And you weren't feeling well, and you came on out, and you, you persevered anyway. How <laughs> about that? You just release all that, <laughs> all that pressure you're carrying, <laughs> helping folk every day. Guys, uh, and my mother's keeper, as you know, we're always out here. We bring, them, we bring our conversation for mental health everywhere because we truthfully believe that mental health is at the core of everything we're trying to succeed at as a society. So you're not going to escape it. There's nothing wrong with being different. There's nothing wrong with having to have a conversation about some of the things that you may have to do that someone else doesn't have to do for your quality of living. It's okay. We're out here to say that you are unique and it's okay, but we've got to make sure that you're strong and stable and get resources and support around you so you can live your best life. Mm -hmm. And my mother's keeper gets it. Mental health matters. And you're going to find at the end of the day, everything is connected. And if we're sharing with you that a lot of what we're dealing with, especially as it comes to this violence, comes culturally, it comes genetically, it comes six, seven generations ago, why would you be walking around carrying that guilt as, and shame as if it's on you? You're not by yourself. You don't need to be by yourself. And my mother's keeper cares, and you know this. Mental health matters, we're all in this together, and we need to start being more non-judgmental and more helpful so that we can get people in the environments and the spaces that they need to be in. I want to read you a couple of statistics. In 2017, there were 144 police officers who died in the line of duty, and about 1,000 active duty military throughout the world who died. Whereas 2,462 school-age children were killed by firearms. If you're going to tell me that we're not a society and we're not a nation that's angry, then I'm going to ask you to look at the latest headlines. Babies, we're losing our babies. The violence has to be addressed, and we've got to figure it out. 
It's not corny to want to save a life. And my mother's keeper wants you to know that we're here every Monday. Uh, did, were you going to say something? Sean? I was just going to add sorry. to your stats that that's one of the leading causes of um, death for black women is homicide. Look at that. They're their intimate partners. So oftentimes that's another reason why they stay. They don't want to be homeless and they don't want to die. So. We don't do this to be popular. We're not about the celebrity thing. God knows you know me. I come out and I show you who I am because I need you to understand the message. And the message is that in our community, our statistics on violence, on death, and how we deal with one another and how we treat one another are horrific. We've got to do better. When you know better, you're supposed to do better. And my mother's keeper is challenging you out there to adopt a situation or circumstance in your workplace, your school, your church, your community and help foster it to a positive circumstance. We all have to be a part of this. The violence needs to stop. And we're acting out because we're not able to speak on it. We're acting out because we're hurt. We're acting out because we don't have answers. But you still have to be accountable for your actions. And we want to help you to do that. We've got wonderful resources. We've got a wonderful city here. We love our city. Go Nats! <laughs> you see what we can do when we come together, we can perform on a champion level, but we've got to do and take care of our issues. And my mother's keeper is signing off. I'm getting ready to go out here and check on this network party and see who I can put in front of you. It's about empowerment. It's about winning. It's about supporting one another. We're down here on this waterfront bringing a positive noise. We believe in all things wellness. Why this hits our radar is because mental health is at the core of everything you hope to be successful at. If you're looking for that job and you haven't figured it out, you just started a new business, you're a little stressed, a little scared, a little worried that you made a decision in haste and now you've got to figure out the money to advertise, you're a little too proud to speak on it, been there, done that. We're asking you to start getting into circumstances of support so that you can elevate your living. Can't elevate when you're constantly holding on to shame and being quiet and being secretive. Keeping secrets and being shameful creates mental exposures that you don't need to have. Okay? Find somebody you can trust and speak to them. Call in my mother's keeper. Call the hotlines, any one of them on our website. Guys, our teen population is the highest population of suicide. Um, that is not a surprise when we have a large population of adults that also need help. Our children are mimicking our behaviors. Our children are carrying on our legacies. And I want to know, and my mother's keeper wants to know, what is your legacy saying right now? May I add one more thing? Please here? do, sure. So when it comes to the African residents, there are 161,000 African residents in the district. D.C. public schools have the highest, okay, um, African population. Mm -hmm. And they speak over 30 languages mm -hmm. in D.C. public schools mm -hmm. at home. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, we're, that's where we say it has to be yeah, culturally cultural. Pro okay. Mm -hmm. So... A large part of what we're doing as well is we're trying to get, and we're in the process of getting it done, mm -hmm. culturally appropriate staff mm. that speak the language. Wow. So we're also working with a dynamite young lady, oh. Khadija Mohammed, mm -hmm. that speaks Spanish, awesome. her native tongue, and Arabic. And when it comes to Arabic, there's several different dialects. Wow. So we're talking about West African Sub-Saharan Arabic. Wow. Right? And we're not talking about Middle Eastern. No, absolutely. So we're also working with the faith community. We're also working with mosques. And one other thing mm -hmm. I found out, <laughs> there is an African-American imam, female, at Howard. And that's where all the students go to, African descent. Awesome. Yeah. So, awesome. I, you know, I just wanted to, to, to let folks know there are services. There's never enough right now. Right. But there will come a time, you know, through mm -hmm. due diligence. We will be able to look back and say, yep, we prevailed. So I wanted to put that out there. I appreciate that. I really do. I tell you, we could go on forever because, <laughs> I mean, I know, I know that you are a wealth of information and knowledge. And God bless you for the wonderful work you're doing. You too. And God bless the folks over there at Ujima and the uh, uh TPC. Thank you. Uh, because we don't have enough. We don't have enough of you. And we don't want you to burn out. 
No, I want you to go anywhere to self care is is a big, it's, a big it's, it's what we do with each other there. We won't allow yeah. we will not allow um, each other to burn out. So I love that. we have a lot of self care activities. I love we even that. have wind down Thursdays every third Thursday. Oh, I love that. Just I love wind point. down Thursday. Mm -hmm. Well, my beautiful divas out there, my beautiful dysfunctional divas out there, those of us that know ourselves. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, yes, we are divas in our own respect, but Lord, all that dysfunction we had to live through to get to this life today, I tell you, if we don't do our work, it might show itself, huh? You know about it. How's it going out there, guys? Thank you for staying with us. And my mother's keepers always excited to get on and give you guys some wonderful content and keep this dialogue going with us at mental health is in and out of every every network every circle and we're going to continue to do our part to bring it forward yes. if there's something you'd like for us to cover a subject matter you'd like for us to bring forward if you yourself are a powerful leader out there sitting on some knowledgeable information that's going to help our community get your butt down here to the waterfront and let's get you in front of our folks Thank you guys so much. We're here Mondays, 6 to 8 on the network Mondays. You're welcome to come down. We're here on Wednesdays from 6 to 9, and they're doing insurance training for folks, and they're sponsoring folks in the community. If you're looking for a career, um, looking to change your life, looking to talk to someone because there's some things in your living that need to be addressed and you need some help about it, guys, whatever it is, let us help you live your best life. The holidays are upon us. And we don't want anybody to get lost in the loop. Let's start our dialogues now and let's keep them going. If you're someone out there that knows somebody that needs some help, please give them my mother's keeper a call, 240-274-9436. Our website is www.mymotherskeeper.com. We're going to see you guys on the other side. And for those of you that want to hang around, we're going to come back and see who's out there at our network party and see if we can bring some more wonderful information. Stay tuned. We're going to put this on our YouTube. And guess what? We're trying to get our very own YouTube channel. So we need you guys to follow us, go to our webpage, click our YouTube and subscribe. Once we get to 100, we got our very own channel. And if I can't get our very own channel talking about matters of substance and mental health, then I know something. We're signing off, guys. Thank you. Please leave us some comments and some remarks. And please look up Cheryl. She's a wonderful, wonderful African-American woman out here helping our community. Cheryl, thank you so much. Thank you, Mamba. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. All righty.